can you tell me a little bit about the documentary to start off? Well, it's called Bloodsworth, um, An Innocent Man. It's um, filmed and directed by um, Gregory Bain out of Ohio, lovely machine. Um, it's we've been working on it for several years. We raised a lot of, we raised about twenty five thousand dollars on Kickstarter to get the film done. So um, all my filming is finished. Um, might have to do some preliminary and some other stuff, but um, it should be done this year. Yeah. And, uh, we're trying to get um, some grants from like Sundance and other things, so we're working on it. How long has it been that you've been working on it? Oh this? man, it's like going on three, four years now. So it's uh, taking a lot of time it, when you don't have money. You know how it works. So if you all have any money out there, give it to Bloodsworth. So mm -hmm. we could use it. How is it? Is it um, sort of based off of your book? It's all about me. It's all about my my what happened to me and my. My uh, time and some about what I've been doing after, but it's all about me. It, it's basically through my narration of my life, how I tell a story today, and so forth. So, you mentioned earlier that you've uh, had financial troubles since getting out. Uh, yeah. Um, and you've been uh, homeless three times. Yep. What What has that sort of journey been like? I feel like that's a. Piece it's crazy. Of it's uh, you know, it's it's crazy. Uh, but it happens to a lot of people, a lot of homeless people in the United States. I mean, I just was trying to search for things to do and how to live my life, and uh, it just you know, it didn't quite work out. <laughs> and so you have to try to bounce back somehow, and I, I have. I, I guess I'm resilient, man. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. I'm uh, I'm leaving my job uh, soon uh, in two weeks actually, for uh, do a Philly for uh, Witness to Innocence. So I'm uh, moving on um, from them, and uh, but you know I do public speaking and I keep I keep moving on. I'll be alright. In your work with uh, Witness of the Innocent uh, and uh, other organizations like them. Um, have you met with other uh, death row inmates that are currently serving? Or I, I haven't. I don't. I don't really go back to death row. Yeah, that's not what I do. I, I try to make it so people don't go to death row. Um, you know, do a lot of uh, you know criminal justice reform work. Um, I was talking. I alluded about some of it. The Bloodsworth Grant, Justice for All Act, trying to get that pushed and, and get that straight. Um, you know, um, you just talk about and educate the public on this stuff. I just got back from George Mason yesterday, spoke up there. So, um, yeah, just I never thought I'd be doing any of this stuff. So it's a uh, it's quite a it's quite a journey. But I don't get the chance to uh, see a lot of the other guys uh, often. We meet every year. A big gathering, also, and uh, this year the gathering's going to be in Philly. Um, hopefully, I get to see them all and uh, get to see some more guys and, uh, and try to help the ones uh, got DNA that can test if uh, if they pass, like the Justice for All. I think you had the Bloodsworth grant. And try to get out. And so. You mentioned two moments um, in your talk that sort of gave you peace of mind, and that is when they caught the guy who actually did it, and then when Maryland abolished the death penalty. Right, right. Can you talk a little bit about how those moments felt? Well, it's um, the first one catching the real killer. It was uh, it was an iconic moment uh, for my own self, not uh, maybe not for history, but it was certainly um, I felt like. Dawn had justice, and that was the biggest thing. Um, you know, she 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 needed justice. She got it as much as we could give, and uh, caught the real killer, put him away. So that was just like the world uh, rolled off my shoulders because I always wanted to find out who did it, and we got him and uh, and put him away. So. Now, with the Maryland death penalty, that had always been in the back of my mind as well. 
And I mean, year after year after year, commissions and all the things I had done, constantly, you know, pushing the state legislature to understand that this we could execute it as a person. And it finally came to fruition uh, last year. I was sitting in the Senate, there's a picture of me with my hands up and, you know, victory. And uh, I, that, uh, I finally had a lot of peace. I did a little bit of reporting on other uh, criminal justice reform, and it seems to me that um, in a lot of areas, uh, things have been improving a lot quicker lately. Um, you've obviously been working on these issues for years. Is, have you seen change um, more recently, or well, things looking more promising? You know, we're, we're, it's certainly, you know, I think um, best practices are starting to come around. Um, you know, I hesitate to say that, you know, we're, we're, we're jumping on the everybody's jumping on the bandwagon and, and making things better. Certainly making it better. We have a lot of work to do. Like the Bloodsworth Grants, the Debbie Smith Program, all those things needs to be put back into place, reauthorized like they're trying to do. And so we can go back and check and see if there's any innocent people in prison, uh, death part two. Um, I think we're changing in a lot of ways. Um, like I, I alluded to it a little bit, uh, best practices like um, witness identification procedures. They're starting to come up. Um, people are doing in camera, you know, um, custodial interrogations now. Camera on all the way, no changing. So not every jurisdiction is doing that because not every jurisdiction can afford it. Uh, but, you know, people are trying. I think we're really trying. I had just read um, yesterday or uh, heard yesterday that Seth Williams in Philadelphia is setting up a conviction integrity. That's amazing for a city like Philly. I mean, since they have a lot of problems, and uh, and you know, with uh, Lynn Abrahams and, and 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 prosecuting a lot of death penalty cases, seventy-two percent of all the death penalty cases in Pennsylvania come from Philly. So, and they're all black. So, um, that's a good thing. And um, you know, so yeah, it's it's happening for the better, but we got a long way to go. You mentioned that you um, have forgiven everyone involved in the case. Really, um, have you met with uh, any of the witnesses? I know you met with the persecutor. No, I met with the prosecutor. I met with the prosecutor. He was a persecutor too, but <laughs> I met with the prosecutor um, um, years ago. And it's been it's been uh, since 2000. It's been 10 years ago since I met her. So. And you know, God rest her soul. She passed away a year or so ago. And you know, hey, it's uh, it was an interesting conversation. And you know, she was big enough to come down and 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 face me. So for that, you know, I feel eternally grateful. Uh, but it's more than just apologies. It's uh, needs to be done with things like this. We can't be so, I don't know how to say it, uh, I have too much tunnel vision. Not, not, not really, not really cool to be so myopic, you know. You have to understand that this could happen to anyone at any time. Let's do it right. And that's, uh, that's the apology I'll take. I think that's everything I've got. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Good luck. Thank you.